Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Our very special guest today and friend of ATP is Dr. Bill Warner. Dr. Bill is the expert on political Islam. Uh, he's an author, a scholar, a lecturer, and a creator of a whole lot of videos that you should check out on YouTube. Welcome, Dr. Bill. Happy to be here. Terrific. Let's kick off the discussion today. There's a lot of talk in the community about the Reformation movement within Islam, meaning there are the radical Muslims who are attempted to be influenced currently by the moderate Muslims. Uh, is that a thing? Can the moderates band together to reform Islam? Well, let's talk about moderate and radical first. People usually mean things. Let me point out that these words are not part of Islam. These are part of a Western projection onto the system of Islam. Islam, before we talk about reforming Islam, why don't we define what Islam is, if we're going to reform it. Islam is the doctrine found in the Quran. Everybody's heard of that, if they even haven't read it. The Sirah, the biography of Muhammad, and the Hadith, his traditions. Those three books are the sacred text of Islam. And that's all that counts. Now, if we're going to reform it, since Islam is found in the doctrine of the Quran, Sirah Hadith, let's choose the Quran. What part of the Quran are you going to add to, or if you add to it, was it perfect? It was perfect before, but now it's not perfect. If you take something out of it, what happens to the perfection of Islam? The Islam is eternal. That is, the Quran is not going to change. So if you quote reform it, really what people mean is just don't pay any attention to the bad stuff. But it's still there for anybody who wants to use it. So I don't see how you can reform something without changing it. And if you change perfection, how are you going to do that? Besides that, the Sirah, the life of Muhammad, a sacred text, his life is over. You, how can you change history? Then you have his traditions. How are you going to change that? They're all written down. So the reformation of Islam is a fantastic dream of Westerners that somehow or another we could reform Islam and then my nice Muslim neighbor wouldn't bother me. But that cannot happen. It's a pipe dream, a pipe dream. Now, mind you, I wish it were not true, but you simply can't change Islam. It is unchangeable. Furthermore, as a scientist and a math guy, you look at it, it is designed to be unchangeable. That is part of its, con its construct. So the reformers that are out there, and there's a number of them quite prominent here in America, are they ignorant about what Islam really is, or are they wanting to change it because they're well, they just want it to be possible, even though religiously, I guess you're saying it's not possible? Textually, it's not possible. Look, you can, you can have reformed Muslims, but they're not, that's different from the reformed Islam. So well, people, can, people can wish things were better. I wish a lot of things were better. But if you're a Muslim, I don't see how you can make it change without destroying perfection. It's fixed. So I know everybody would like for something, oh, I know what I want to say. Let's mark a distinction here between Muslim and Islam. Islam is a fixed doctrine. Muslims are, they're people. They might have their foolish dreams. I've met a, uh, one of these reformers in Canada, charming man. Now you get to the question, what is his motivation? I really don't know. I think it's wishful thinking. He's a nice guy, very pleasant fellow but I don't think that he understands what he's doing or he's just wishing that things would change. So, so let me be more specific. Um, I've heard a lot of talk and, I, and I've literally read that some moderate Muslims, I'm putting that in quote because mm -hmm. my understanding is they're apostates for deciding what they're gonna follow and what they're not, have decided that this thing about wanting to conquer the world and uh, put the entire planet uh, that we happen to live on under the flag of the caliphate and courts become Islamic courts and law becomes Islamic law and Sharia is the law of the land. So the American constitution, the British, the French, and so on fall by the wayside and we're all eventually going to be Muslims uh, by the book or by the sword, right? that conquering mentality is not going to be followed because that's, uh, well, from the Middle Ages. And so the moderate view is if people want to follow, they can. 
aren't they actually apostates? And isn't that subjecting, subjecting them to the death penalty? I don't know if it's the death penalty. The apostasy death penalty is frequently not carried out. I know a woman who was an apostate. Her name is Nani Darwish. And after she became, after she left Islam, he said, I could kill you, but I will not. But never call us. We are dead to you. Well, this is pretty serious business because, I mean, I, I think that's very serious. But so it cannot be changed. And the, but the killing of apostates is something that's infrequent, but it does happen. And the threat is used a lot. Now, there may be other apostates who can correct me on this, but actually I keep up with apostates to some degree because I'm a great admirer of them. I've earlier said that people don't want the truth of Islam because they're afraid. Apostates know the truth and they act on it. So therefore, I'm very much a fan of apostates, which may sound like a peculiar thing to say, but these are courageous people, truly courageous people. And as a matter of fact, I think that we should welcome all apostates from Islam into America. That, that there are persecuted people and they should have a home here. And then we should defend them. No doubt, Bill. I, I agree 100%. Thanks for joining us today. And a special thanks with uh, our special guest, Dr. Bill Warner. Bill, remind people where they can find out more about political Islam. Go to my website, politicalislam.com, and go to my YouTube channel, Political Islam. I specialize I heard- in little short videos. I, I, I urge all of you to go check him out. And thanks to all of you for joining us today. If you haven't subscribed yet to our text message service, it's free. Please send a text message stating the word truth in the message and send it to 88202. Push send. You'll be signed up for free. You'll get all of our stuff all the time. It just takes about five seconds. For ATP, I'm Barry Newsbaum. 